Hi everyone, Sean Spence here. I'm one of the PGY-5s in critical care medicine at the University of Calgary. And in today's screencast, we're going to be going over how to conduct a lower extremity point of care ultrasound exam looking for a deep venous thrombosis. The start of this screencast, I will apologize in advance, is a little bit dry, but it is nonetheless very important because during this segment, we're going to focus on lower extremity vascular anatomy uh, especially as it pertains to properly conducting a lower extremity POCUS exam looking for a DVT. Um, we're then going to break this down into the five key points of vascular bifurcation that absolutely need to be uh, incinated and interrogated in order to conduct a complete and diagnostic quality uh, DVT study. Uh, we're then going to go over a study that I perform myself from start to finish. Uh, and when all is said and done, I hope that you come out of this with a good enough anatomic and practical understanding of things uh, that you are able to go out and start getting some hands-on practice yourselves uh, doing POCUS exams looking for lower extremity DVTs. Again, this is a vascular uh, examination and so it's going to utilize a linear array high frequency probe like is used for most vascular imaging. Uh, as much as we are taught to focus on the calf for an exam for DVT uh, in medical school, the majority of the scanning we actually do for POCUS DVT scans is quite high in the thigh, starting as high up as the level of the inguinal fold. Uh, in order to conduct a good exam, it's really important to acquire images and interpret them such that you're clearly able to tell the difference between veins and arteries. Veins tend to be thinner walled, irregular in shape, and compressible, whereas arteries tend to be pulsatile, thicker walled, and rounder in shape. In cases where there is true uncertainty despite applying these three principles, color Doppler can also be used to look for pulsatile flow that is typical of arteries, though this is not usually done as part of a DVT exam. And then, as much as we're going to focus on the five key points of vascular bifurcation, uh, and these are the points that I've recorded uh, to show on the screencast today, uh, it is equally important to compress and interrogate the vessels at intervals of every one to two centimeters because it is possible that clots are present in the more linear portions of these vessels and have not yet propagated to the bifurcations of the vessels, though typically the vascular bifurcation points tend to be highest yield with regards to the detection of clots. And so now we're going to look at the vascular anatomy as it pertains uh, to this exam. Uh, again, bear with me. Uh, this is the heavy-duty anatomy bit, and then we will then get into the scanning uh, where we apply this in vivo. And so the dotted line here represents the level of the inguinal fold, which is quite high up in the patient. Uh, again, we spend a lot of time in medical school focusing on the calf for a DVT exam, but really, if you're looking that far down, uh, you're likely going to miss the majority of points that we're actually going to be looking at for DVTs. And so, uh, lateral to the external iliac vein, we have the external iliac artery, which distal to the inguinal ligament becomes the common femoral artery. If you remember the navel artery uh, mnemonic from medical school, N-A-V-E-L, nerve artery vein empty lymphatics, uh, this reminds you of the placement of vascular and nerve structures uh, within the inguinal canal going from lateral to medial uh, and again A comes before V so we know that the common femoral artery uh, lies lateral to the common femoral vein. This course is distally until the level of the lateral perforator vein where it then splits into the aptly named deep and superficial femoral arteries. Uh, the lateral perforator vein moves laterally between these two branches and then you have the superficial femoral artery which stays more superficial within the thigh and the deep femoral artery, which courses deeper. The superficial femoral artery then continues along beside the superficial femoral vein until the level of the popliteal fossa, where it gives rise to the popliteal artery. And you can see this artery at our final and fifth point of incination, where it lies deep to the popliteal vein. The common femoral vein lies medial to the common femoral artery, and the first branch it gives off is the greater saphenous vein. This is a branch that courses supramedially from the common femoral artery uh, and is a conduit often used uh, as a venous graft during coronary artery bypass grafting surgery. Uh, I will stress the importance of uh, interrogating the proximal few centimeters of the greater saphenous vein before moving down along the common femoral vein 
because instances have been described where clot is present in the greater saphenous vein and has not yet moved proximally to a level where it is visualized at the bifurcation of the greater saphenous vein and the common femoral vein. The next branch off the common femoral vein is the lateral perforator vein, uh, which moves laterally, as its name would suggest, between the superficial and deep femoral arterial branches. This then continues along uh, until the next point of bifurcation, uh, where it then gives rise to the superficial femoral vein, which courses superficially beside the superficial femoral artery, and the deep femoral vein, which moves deeper uh, inside the thigh compartment. The superficial femoral vein then courses distally to the level of the popliteal fossa, where it becomes the popliteal vein, sitting superficial to the popliteal artery uh, in the popliteal fossa of the patient. And so here, moving over to a diagram of the patient's left leg and uh, lifted with thanks from Dr. Arntfield's excellent textbook, uh, we have the five key points of vascular bifurcation that need to be interrogated uh, shown uh, on the patient's leg as well as in cross-section and to the right. And so again, just distal to the inguinal fold, you have the common femoral vein lying medial to the common femoral artery. Again, scanning and compressing every one to two centimeters. The next key point is where the greater saphenous vein takes off from the common femoral vein, and it almost looks like a little bleb coming off the superomedial side, or almost kind of 10 to 11 o'clock position of the common femoral vein, again sitting medial to the common femoral artery. The third point of interest is where the lateral perforator vein comes off the common femoral vein, and it moves laterally between the newly formed superficial and deep femoral arteries, so again, it kind of looks like the tail of a teardrop moving between two arteries just lateral to it. The common femoral vein at point four then gives rise to the superficial and deep femoral vein, which form almost a figure eight type looking uh, cross section, uh, which can be seen in image number four. And again, the superficial and deep femoral veins sit medial to their corresponding superficial and deep femoral arteries. And then finally, at point number five, in the popliteal fossa, uh, we have the popliteal vein sitting superficial to the popliteal artery. And if you ever need to remember which is which, just remind yourself, pop on top. And so the popliteal vein lies superficial and therefore on top of the popliteal artery. This picture again demonstrates just how high up you need to start for some of the more proximal points of incination for DVT exam. It also shows excellent patient positioning with gentle flexion of the hip, slight external rotation of the leg, and draping for modesty, uh, ultimately in a way that sets up the sonographer for the acquisition of good quality images and a successful lower extremity DVT scan. With regards to scanning in the popliteal fossa, at this level, the vessels have moved posterior in the leg and uh, lie behind the patient's knee as it pertains to the sonographer. And so in order to insinate and get good images of this area, the probe is held facing towards the sonographer, and I've found it easiest to acquire these images with the knee in about 90 degrees of flexion. Uh, sometimes you'll need to phone a friend and ask for help in order to stabilize the patient's leg in such a manner. Uh, I would also encourage you not to press too hard in this area, as the low pressure popliteal vein is relatively easy to squash down, uh, and you can fool yourself acquiring images in this area if you're applying too much pressure. And so now we're actually going to move on to a DVT exam that I performed during my time with the POCUS service at Western University uh, in London, Ontario. And so here, again, we're starting on the left. In the left leg, the common femoral vein is going to lie medial to the common femoral artery. So we have vein here, artery here. We're able to press down, fully oppose the walls of the common femoral vein, and satisfy ourselves that no clot is present at this level. Again, you're going to scan every one to two centimeters, compressing all the way along. And the next key point of vascular bifurcation is where the left greater saphenous vein takes off from the common femoral vein. And again, left of the screen here is medial. You have the common femoral vein here on the left with the greater saphenous vein moving superomedially off this and the common femoral artery to the right. And so the next step after scanning the proximal few centimeters of the greater saphenous vein to ensure that there's no clot hiding there uh, is to move to the level of the left lateral perforator. And so again, we mentioned the left side of the screen here uh, is the medial side. And so you see the lateral perforator moving to the right or lateral side of the screen 
uh, in this cross-sectional image. And again, you are able to see the superficial femoral artery superficial to the lateral perforator vein and the deep femoral artery deep to the lateral perforator vein. And again, it looks like uh, a little bit of a teardrop tail moving laterally uh, between those two arteries. Uh, and this would be key point number three of vascular bifurcation that needs to be incinated uh, as part of a complete point of care ultrasound exam. The next point that we look at is the bifurcation of the common femoral vein into the superficial femoral vein seen here and the deep femoral vein seen here. Uh, there's a little bit of artifact present, and I apologize that the image quality isn't perfect here, but nonetheless, you're able to see that we're able to squash down completely both the superficial and deep femoral veins at this point of vascular bifurcation and these lie medial to the femoral arteries, and we're able to satisfy ourselves that there's no clot present in this area. Again, you're going to move all the way along every one to two centimeters, compressing and insinating the superficial femoral vein until you come to this fifth and final key point of vascular bifurcation, uh, where we're going to look at the popliteal artery and popliteal vein. Remembering the memory aid pop on top, you're able to see the popliteal vein on top here, the popliteal artery underneath. We're able to fully squash down the vein. Uh, and we're able to satisfy ourselves that there is no clot present uh, within this patient's left popliteal fossa. So one more time, squishes down nicely, being careful not to exert too much pressure and fool yourself because you can see it's easy to see the artery um, and making sure that by not putting too much pressure you're not hiding the popliteal vein from yourself. So we're now going to move over to the patient's right leg and so now the right side of the screen is going to be the medial side and so here you have the common femoral vein lying medial to the common femoral artery we're able to give things a nice press we're able to oppose the anterior and posterior walls of the vessel and we've done a good job of satisfying ourselves that no clot is present at this uh, key site of incination. So the next site that we're going to look at is the takeoff of the greater saphenous vein seen here again supramedially taking off from the common femoral vein. I drift the field of view a little bit here such that we lose view of the common femoral artery which can be seen on the left side of the screen here and then again you'd follow the common uh, pardon me the greater saphenous vein for the proximal few uh, centimeters to ensure that there's no clot hiding out there that hasn't yet moved to the level of this uh, second key point of vascular bifurcation. The next thing that we're going to look at is again the takeoff of the lateral perforator vein. So here the left side of the field of view is the lateral part of the field of view. You have a nice view of the superficial and deep femoral arteries. You have the common femoral vein lying a little bit medial here and you've got a nice view of the takeoff of the lateral perforator. We're able to squash down the common femoral vein, we're able to squash down the lateral perforator and we've got a nice view of the two arteries and we have satisfied ourselves that there is no deep venous thrombosis present at this site. The next thing we're going to look at is the superficial and uh, femoral vein and deep femoral vein bifurcation point. So again, here a little bit superficially, you have the superficial femoral vein. Deep to it here, you have the deep femoral vein. You have the superficial femoral artery here, the deep femoral artery here. We're able to squash all of the venous walls together, and in so doing, we know that there is no clot present at this key site. Again, you're going to move along the superficial femoral vein, incinating, squashing, and satisfying yourself every one to two centimeters that there is no clot present there until you get to the most distal and fifth and final point of vascular bifurcation, uh, which lies in the popliteal fossa. Again, reminding yourself, pop on top, you have the popliteal vein lying superficial to the popliteal artery, not exerting too much pressure so you don't squash the vein and hide it from yourself. And one more time, pressing things down so that you know at this fifth and most distal point of vascular bifurcation, there is no clot present. And so moving on to a separate exam that was also acquired during my time on elective in uh, London. Here, we're actually going to see a positive study result. As the label would suggest, this is the common femoral vein in the patient's left leg. And already looking at it, you can see the common femoral artery here, the common femoral vein uh, medial to this on the left. You can sort of uh, imagine the takeoff of the greater saphenous vein at this level. And again, you're able to see a little bit of echogenic material within the lumen of the vein before even compressing, but it becomes very apparent on attempted compression of the vein that we're unable to squash things down and that this echogenic uh, material within the lumen of the vein uh, is indeed a uh, 
deep venous thrombosis of this patient's left leg. Um, this is an image acquired at the same level, but I've intentionally included it because it really does stress the importance of compression to a complete DVT exam. Because um, as things stand, before you squash things down, you maybe see a hint of echogenic uh, material within the lumen of the vessel, but it's not clearly apparent that a DVT is present there until you actually exert pressure on the vessel and try to squash things down. And again, you've got the common femoral vein on the left of the screen here with the echo thrombus being seen within the lumen of the vessel and that is medial to the left common femoral artery. So finally we're going to look at this in a long axis view. Uh, again the dot of the transducer is towards the patient's head and as you move distally within the lumen of the vessel you're able to see uh, echogenic material uh, that is in keeping with deep venous thrombosis. And then when you go to squash things down, you see that we're really not able to compress the vessel very much. And this is as a result of the clot that is present in this patient's common femoral vein uh, as part of this uh, positive deep venous thrombosis exam. Uh, I'd just like to take a minute finishing up to say a big thank you for Dr. Arnfield for allowing me to uh, use the figures from his excellent textbook. Uh, I'd encourage you all to pick up a copy and for those interested in seeking further uh, experience hands-on in point of care ultrasound, I had a fantastic time uh, on elective in London and would highly recommend the experience to any and all interested parties. And so at the end of this, I hope that you all have a better idea of the anatomy involved in a point of care ultrasound uh, DVT scan uh, and that you've acquired the basics from an anatomic and practical standpoint to go out and start getting some hands-on practice uh, scanning in your own units. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.